afternoon. Clouds continue to hang over us. There'll be a little bit of drizzle probably tonight. Tomorrow we could see a little sunshine. Don't expect any more rain. And then I'm happy to say some nice weather sets in for the next few days and will dry out then. I'll have the complete forecast and a look at how much rain fell around the viewing area over this last weekend a little bit later in Eyewitness News. Gentlemen? Coming up next, Doug John. State is talking with confidence about getting Israel. Claiming they can't get a break from heaven or earth or Albany. Lynn has the wet weather facts. The amazing has sports. I'm John Rowland. This is the 10 o'clock news. Good evening. The United States is pulling out all the stops to try to get Israel to pull its troops out of Lebanon. Right now, the Secretary... As you probably already know, this is officially the wettest April on record. The skies right now cloudy, but by tomorrow afternoon, those cloudy skies turn finally sunny. How about the weekend ahead? Will it be the ninth straight weekend of wet weather? Back to tell you more about that later in the show. John? Well, in just the weekends. We'll tell you about that coming up. First time in the history of Wall Street that can tell you how rain can ruin a weekend. But for farmers in Pine Island, New York, the regular downpours have been more than a bother. The rains have been wiping out newly planted crops. In Pine Island, the heart of the Black Muck Basin that covers Orange County, New York, and Sussex County. New Jersey farmers fear the worst is still to come. Lonnie Reed reports. There's no telling where the rivers stop and the fields begin. There was 4,200 acres underwater just this past week. We envisioned probably about 3,000 acres going under again this week. The 30-mile-long Black Muck Basin boasts some of the richest soil in the nation. This spring, it's saturated soil. Relentless rains, debris-choked riverbeds, black-top developments that refuse to absorb water. All are being blamed for the floods which destroy seeds and force planting delays. Farmers say the only thing draining around here is their wallets. This spring, I've had a pump running steady for at least two weeks and uh, I've burned over 1,200 gallons of gas. Onions, lettuce, celery, and sod are just some of what's grown in the Black Muck Basin from markets up and down the eastern seaboard. Crop failures mean lost jobs, higher consumer prices, and more debts for farmers already in debt. For years, farmers here have been lobbying the state and federal governments for help. They want the federal crop insurance available to growers in other parts of the country. They want 100 years of accumulated debris cleaned out of the Walk Hill River. And they want Governor Cuomo to declare the basin a disaster area, kicking off a process that could make them eligible for low-interest government loans. While the governor studies the request, the farmers complain that, once again, upstate is being shortchanged. When we complained because we have to pay the extra quarter percent to help the MTA in this area and there's uh, other taxes on us for MTA, he said that we were all part of a family and we should all pay the bill. We asked him two weeks ago to declare this a disaster area. All he has to do is declare it and then it'll be go on to the federal government where a declaration be made. But we don't seem to be part of the family. Only the paying members of the family are we. The farmers say that if they can't replant by May 10th, the whole $32 million season could be lost. Right now, losses are placed at up to $8 million. I'm Lonnie Reed, Channel 5 News. If you've tried to find a new place to live lately, then you know two things all too well. everyone. Well, as if yesterday were not bad enough, today the lingering drizzle and clouds. The high today only 54 degrees. That is 10 degrees below the norm. 
42 degrees the low, and that's where the thermometer stands right now. That's 6 degrees Celsius, humidity of 76 percent, winds out of the west-northwest at 16 miles per hour. The barometer's on the rise, and we do have some cloudy skies outside. Finally, though, tomorrow, the sun tries to poke through the clouds. That will happen late in the afternoon. Here's why. We've got low pressure. It was the culprit as far as the rain was concerned yesterday and today. It's a slow-moving low-pressure system, so the clouds, the drizzle could linger for tonight and tomorrow morning. Again, the clear coming tomorrow as high pressure moves in from the south. The best day so far looks like Wednesday. Thermometer climbs up to 70 degrees finally and the sun comes out in full bloom. Thursday, you're not going to like this. We've got another frontal system, same old story. We've been seeing this every week for the past three weeks. Moves in, gives us some clouds on Thursday, possibility of rain Thursday night and Saturday. Well, it's the weekend. So what does that mean? You guessed it, more rain. Back to tell you more about that next in the forecast. April skies are in your eyes, but darling, don't be blue. It's been wet out there, but to give you an idea of just how much rain we have gotten, keep in mind that normally in April we get about 3.30 inches of rain. So far, for this month, we've had a total of 13.59 inches. The greatest amount of rainfall for any month is a little over 16 inches. And yes, we are expecting more rain in the area by the end of the week, so we could be heading for yet another record. Meanwhile, for tonight, cloudy skies, chance of drizzle, 44 degrees. Sunrise, 5.02 a.m., the temperature then, 44, and and sunset for John Rowland, 6.47 p.m. tomorrow. Five-day forecast looks like this for tomorrow. The clouds, finally it turns partly sunny, though, by the end of the day. And the high tomorrow, close to 60 degrees. Enjoy it. Wednesday, nicest day of the week. We get to uh, almost 70 degrees. We are calling for 70 degrees. And partly sunny skies. Welcome sight. Thursday, chance for the showers. Uh-oh, 69 degrees. Friday, partly sunny. But then, of course, it is Saturday, so the showers do return. 68 degrees. Mr. Rowland, don't look so sad. Why not sad? Plenty of scotch and water, anyway. What the heck? <laughs> right. Right? All right, amazing. I got a question for you tonight from... Pardon me if I mispronounce your name, sir. Bill, I'm going to take a shot. Henny Age. H-E-N-E-A-G-E, -E, if I'm... It, I'm sorry. From Newark. Amazing. Only one of the 17 pitchers on the 1962 New York Mets team had a winning record. What was his name? You had me nervous for a minute. I thought you wanted me to tell you the 16 who didn't. Well, you probably, now, I know, I know you the one who could. did. No, I, I know the one who did. Now, I couldn't name all 16. I could probably name about eight or nine. But I remember Kenny McKenzie. That's right. Kenny McKenzie... Uh, won five and lost four that year, but Roger Craig won ten games. Al Jackson pitched. Ray Davio pitched. Jay Hook, your good friend, whom you played golf with. Are you finished? <laughs> 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 Amazing is next. Stay with us. You guys, it's going to keep raining? Yeah, you better be cool.